Welcome to Turning Tuesday. This week, we are looking at two bolt action style pens that I made at the same time. They are gold with purple heart, and the turning on this occasion is what bent my mandrel. One of these pens was for a customer, one of these pens was for me. I simply love the way the purple and gold work together. A clip I haven't actually included before is when I'm using the flush trim bit. What I'm doing right now is trying to bring the wood down and align it with the barrel. So, inserting the rod inside a snug fit on the barrel. You see it's turned yellow. Unfortunately, the trimmers are a little blunt. They don't work that great. And getting ready to turn. I'm just going to do a quick sharpen here. I do sharpen two tools just in case I want to swap between them during the turning. This second tool that I'm tightening in now with a two inch exposure is the one that likes to send sparks. I'm using a Sherwood slow grinder with CBN wheels. My other side is 80 grit, this side is 180 grit. Quick touch up, check the blade, and off we go. Now, I'm aligning the tool rest here. What I do is I try to align the tool rest with the lathe bed. So, I'm looking from directly above it right now and making sure that back edge of the lathe bed is in alignment with that tool rest. So now locking it down and progressing. Now, you may notice here that I didn't like how it was turning. I then tightened it and that's when I bent my mandrel. It may have worked, but unfortunately, I have now bent that mantle and it can no longer be used for making pens. So the shape that I prefer with these pens is straight. It's not ideal for some people. Some people really like to barrel them out. It's not something that I prefer. So for me, I like to make the wood shine and having a bulge in the middle of the pen does not feel nice when you're holding it. So I prefer straight and some turners prefer other ways and that's fine for them. I've just switched tools there because I realized the purple heart wasn't cutting as nice as it should. You may notice that I'm rubbing my fingers across the end of the bushings and the wood. What I'm doing there is I'm actually using my nails to see if it catches or if it's sitting beautifully flush or just below it. So I'm doing my standard 150 through to 600 grit. So I let the lathe do the turning which gets some circular motions and then I hand turn it and do left to right along the grain. That takes any of those circular motions out of it.
Moving on to play with some fire. So, as I've mentioned in other videos, and I'll mention it again now, the oils in the purple heart, when you expose it to some heat, it turns to a purple shade. Apply in the first coat of finish, and that purple really starts to shine straight away. Uh, using Bob Smith Industry glue, this is thin CA glue. I'll quickly whip through some of these and we'll move on to the micro mesh. So I've finished with the thin and now I've put a medium on. You may notice we've got some ridges. That always happens with the medium. Now, you know, I actually received a comment a couple of videos ago asking about the black applicator that I'm using there. That is EVA foam, three millimeters thick. And in America and other parts of the world, they don't call it EVA foam, they call it craft foam. Um, what that is, is a closed cell foam and the glue doesn't soak into it. So unlike shop towel and things like that, it doesn't soak in and it doesn't grab. So you've got a little bit more time to play and smooth it out. So you'll notice that I move really quick left and right while I'm using the glue. And it comes out with a much finer finish. Moving through the micro mesh quite swiftly. Uh, you'll notice that I will do two layers of the micro mesh because I realized at the end of this that I still had a couple of little ridges and some pits that had filled with the micro mesh remainders. So you'll notice in between the layers there's a little bit of white powder almost on the surface. And so I get rid of that. This is the final one. You can really see that shine is there now and it comes out so beautiful. Moving on to the final pass of the micro mesh. You'll notice that I touch twice. Once is with a fresh layer, so it's barely touching. It's just adding the water onto the blank. Then I come back with additional moisture so that it's a nice wet sand. Nobody wants to be breathing the tiny particles of plastic. I am wearing a face mask because it's just not worth my health. Second layer now and then I'll switch to real time and we will finish this off. Stepping into real time now and yeah you can tell this is such a beautiful smooth finish. As you can see, I'm moving left and right far, pretty fast, um, but it's a very light touch and you'll notice the water beading there. That's really what you want to see. If it's beading, that means there's nothing for it to get caught on. It's a light touch and dry it off and it still doesn't dry off fully because it's just that smooth. So in that little cut, I did finish drying it off and now I'm just showing off that beautiful chatoyance as it changes through the light. Little bit of a slow motion here. It was recorded in slow motion. I sped it up a bit because it was just taking too long. You can see that warp that's happening in there at the moment. And moving into the assembly.
the assembly of these pins is actually pretty straightforward there's only two major parts the top and the bottom and it just screws on so the top just goes straight in the bottom has a screw attachment so you put your uh, pen in and then you screw down the top then when you lock in the pen it is functional You really see how that purple works with that gold. It's absolutely stunning. And that's two completed pens. If you've enjoyed this, I would request that you like and subscribe. This is one of the pens. This is the pen that ended up in my collection. And that's both of the pens. Thank you for watching. Really appreciate it.